Okay, okay. It came from Egypt. It came from Egypt. Hold on real quick. Give me a uh, hold that and give me Proverbs 331. Proverbs 331. Because we just said, you know, we were enslaved in Egypt. They were our oppressors. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know that. I know what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm, and that's what we're here for, sis. We're here to help you. Right? We're here to help you. Just like that brother took his hat off to show repentance. We're here to help you. Right? I'm going to show you something real quick. Give me this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, and verse 31. Go ahead. Envy thou not the oppressor. It said, envy thou not the oppressor. Read. The oppressor is somebody who would have you enslaved. Right. The Egyptian nation of people oppressed the children of Israel. Right. Right? Read. And choose none of his ways. And what? And choose none of his ways. And what? And choose none of his ways. Okay, she hear it. She you hear it. Uh-uh. She hear it. Nah, don't run. Don't run. It said it what? And choose none of his ways. So that way around your neck is an Egyptian custom. Right. But you're greater than them. So even if it's sparkly, your God said, hey, look, don't choose that. something real quick right I'm gonna show you something real quick this is one of the only times where you're gonna stand in front of black men and we're gonna say hey look you got to put that bonnet back on right quick I'm gonna show you why though watch this I'm gonna show you why okay I'm gonna show you why you love the Lord you love the Lord all right watch this give me first Corinthians 11 the book of, order first the book of first Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3 uh-huh but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. All right, says so in 1 Corinthians 11, we're reading the order of mankind the way God created it. Right. Okay? The order of mankind. It ain't for back then. This is how things have been since the beginning of time, right? Read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ, right? So the one above the man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Now the head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So right now you got God, Christ, man, woman. So on. the head of woman is man. The head of man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. That's the order, right? All right, go ahead. Keep reading. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. It said every man that prayeth or prophesying, meaning reading this Bible or listening to someone speak the Bible, speak the truth of the Bible, Having his head covered, read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. It said that man, if we do out here, and we out here teaching the Bible, and we got on a hat, it said we dishonoreth our head. Who is the head of man again? God, basically. Uh-uh. I mean Christ. Again. Christ, right? Christ. They're not the same individual. They're two different entities, right? So the head of Christ. I love God, then. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, you love Christ. You love God through Christ. That's how you do it, right? That's the. That's how I go to. That's how I go to. Oh, oh I see. I see the. Uh, uh, uh. All right, watch this. We'll show you. We're gonna show you, but right quick. So it said, if the man is out here praying or prophesying to listen to the Bible, and he has his head covered, you dishonor your head, which is Christ. Teach. You don't want to dishonor Christ, right? Teach. You believe in Christ? Oh yeah. You don't want to dishonor him. It says when you're listening to someone teach the Bible or you're reading the Bible or you're going into prophecy, you have to uncover your head. Right? 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 That's a commandment. That's why we ain't out here with our hats on. Watch this. I'm going to show you. But every woman. No, we stop, stop back here to for him. Every man that friend or prophesying having his head covered dishonor of his head. Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonor of his head. In verse 3, the order of God is God, Christ, man, woman. So the head of woman is man. The head of man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. Right. So if you're dishonoring your head, you're dishonoring Christ. Right? It said if you don't uncover your head when the Bible coming out, you're dishonoring Christ. That's a commandment. So what you gonna do? 
Okay. Yeah, you see? That's, it might not seem like a big deal, but the angels rejoice when one of us repent. That's what that is. That's repentance. That's, you know what? I didn't know that. Let me get myself together. Right. Now, back to you, Bree. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth, if you're hearing the words of this Bible, listening to your, what they call gospel music or in church, read, with her head uncovered, come on, dishonoreth her head. If you do it with your head uncovered, you dishonor your head. Right. Now who is your head? The man. Exactly. Not just your man. I like how you said that. <laughs> the man. Because right. even if you don't got a man, right. you're still a father or an uncle or a brother right. or somebody or your son. You dishonor, or that brother standing right here, these brothers out here, you dishonor your head. Right. That's why I said, any other time, I'd be like, sis, why you got that body on? But right now, because you're listening to the scriptures, you in, you in righteousness. Right. You understand? Right. You in righteousness as far as that aspect, right? right. Now, my name is Zemnaya. Nice to meet y'all. So what, what, what sprung y'all to come over here? What did y'all hear that was like, you know what? Let me walk over here and see what's going on. I came and brought me the papers, but when I heard you saying, because I'm over here painting the house just in case if right. anybody want to work and learn carpentry, which is what we should do. But um, I heard you say we're Israelites. So I was like, they must know something. So let me go listen. Right, right. So look, check this sign out over here. Y'all come over here and look at this sign, right? So this sign is the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, right? These are the people who God chose out of all other people he created. So on this side, is what the world has called you to keep you away from knowing this side, right? So what it, what would the world call you if you was filling out an application or what, where's your father from? What is his nationality? Because what's on the left is what God calls you. What about you, my brother? It goes by your father. Come on, sis. There's no such thing as a mixed child. Bring it out. Go ahead and put that out there. Just in case it's it in your mind, you know, that's what they teach. Oh, I'm mixed. I got this, that, and the third of me. Nope. You got what your father is. Right. And he's what his father was. Right. You understand? So where would y'all see yourselves on that side? Like me, my family is West Indian. Even though I was raised over here, my family is Jamaican. Right. So therefore, I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. Right. Right. right? So what tribe of y'all would y'all be from? From what I know from my dad would be dad. Oh, you oh you Native American. Okay. Yeah. All praises. Yeah, it's a lot of, you know, this, this was where y'all land was. So the majority of the people you see over here that might be black could potentially be Native American anyway, right? right. right. So what about you, my brother? I wish I could tell you, man. You don't know where your father was? Indian. I'm gonna go ahead and give you Judah. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a curse, bro. It's a curse that we won't know who our forefathers was. Right. That's a curse. It's a curse that we don't see out this land over here. It was called Arsareth when he gave it to y'all, meaning land where never mankind dwelt. Right. Your ancestors were here first. Matter of fact, they was the last to get conquered. Gad was bad with it. White folks couldn't kill them until they came and got my ancestors who had already been conquered, called the Buffalo Soldiers. Buffalo Soldiers. I don't know if y'all know about that history, but they came and got them from Jamaica and brought them over here to fight against their own people. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Native Americans was black. Yeah. You know, we got light. Of course, we create our colors. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But watch this real quick. So this nation of people, right, the people that God chose. You said you're from the tribe of Judah, right? Well, you didn't say it. I said that. We're going to give you somebody else who's from the tribe of Judah because I know you might look at this and be like, okay, well, you know, the Cubans, they don't really look all that black. You know, Native Americans don't look all that dark. You know, this, that, and the third. I understand we mix with our nations, bro. We, we decided to mingle with our nations against our commandments. So you start having light skin, dark skin, all that type stuff. But regardless, you are what your father is. Right. It don't matter what your mother was. You are what your father is, right? So I'm going to give you... Who was from the tribe of Judah? This is something that we don't know, right? Yeah. What color is Christ? What color was Christ? Copper, right? Say it again. Copper? Ain't that what they said? See, you haven't had anybody walk around talking about, hey, yeah, I'm copper. What would he be called today? Brown. He black. Right. <laughs> he was black. Brown. <laughs> he was black. Right. But watch right. this. We're going to show you. We're going to show you. you. You you right, though, brown. But we're going to show you a different level of that, right? But first, let's get where he was from. Um, Hebrews 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. Like we're going to deal with that too. For it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. It said there's evidence in the Bible that our Lord Jesus Christ came from Judah. Right. What does Judah say right here beside it? American black. Right. Right. If he walked the earth today, he would be called a nigger just like the rest of us. Right. Just like the rest of us. Tell me he ain't died a black man death. Right. Innocently right. killed? Yeah. That's our history. All day. Jeez. Right? 
But it said it's evidence that our Lord sprang from Judah, right? right. Um, give me uh, Revelations 1. Oh. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 10. Bring it on. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I right there is talking about John the Revelator. You know, he was the one that was on the Isle of Patmos that wrote the book of Revelations. Right. You know what Revelations means? It means to reveal. It don't mean right. the end. You know, the root word of the re Revelation is reveal. Revealing, right? So that's what that is. It means to reveal. So it's revealing the images that John saw, the, the vision that John saw when he was on the Isle of Patmos, right? right. Read. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. That was test today, the Sabbath day. That's the Lord's day, seventh day of the week, right? And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, right. the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. So John heard a voice behind him. Remember, he's on a prison island. He heard somebody, excuse me, behind him saying, hey, hey, I'm the big dog in charge, John. I'm the big man on campus, right? Whatever I tell you, write it down. You know what I'm saying? He said, whatever I tell you, write it down, all right? Read. And so, uh, skip down to, you can jump to 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So you heard somebody screaming, you're going to turn around and look at it, right? Read. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So seven golden candlesticks goes into the menorah, right? right? If you look at Jewish falsehood lies, they be having nine candlesticks based off some garbage they came up with. The Bible says seven candlesticks, right? Read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Standing in front of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Right. So they say this image is who? Who they say that is? Who, who is that, bro? They said it's Jesus, right? Yeah. Well, who that? Who that? Yeah, yeah, who that right there? Man, oh, oh, somebody in your family? Oh, oh praise yeah, right? Hey, look. So look, so look. It said the image that John saw, he saw uh, a man standing in the in front of seven golden candlesticks. That's what that looked like, right? It's a man standing in front of seven golden candlesticks. You be seeing this dude sometime, he be having a sheet in his hand, looking out, looking out soft and effeminate. Right? So that's already a strike. He already don't even ain't even standing right. Right, right. Read. One like unto the son of man. Come on. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. He was clothed in a garment down to the foot. Hold on, we gotta get to Jesus is black. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Read. And got about the paps with that golden girdle. He had on a mean garment. We know it was green according to Daniel, but he had a golden belt across it too. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It said the hair on his head and the hair on his face were white and like wool. So white is a color. Wool ain't not ain't always white. Wool is a texture. Right. Right? What is another word for woolly textured hair? Figure it out. Do you know? It's not straight. Yeah, yeah, not straight. You know another it start with an N. What's another word they say? Net net net. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, I yeah, don't like that word. It's, I would say four C. Four C, right? Course, course four C. Yeah, right. I like I like that too. So it said that Jesus was going to have white hair on his head and it was going to be woolly, curly, coarse hair. An uh, afro. The, the right. hair just like yours, just like his, just like what's under your braids, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got woolly hair that's black of a black colored nature. Bring it's it a Negroid trait. You understand? Right. This dude right here, he got brown stringy hair to look like dead goat hair. Right? right? Monkey hair. Yeah, monkey hair, right? Right, monkey hair, that's funny. No lips, white skin under the fur, it's crazy, it's monkey. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, so that's another stripe. This dude don't even got the right hair. But that brother over there, he got woolly hair, white in color, right? Read. That's white as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So when you read Genesis 49, it tells you that Christ's eyes will be red with wine. Right. What was his first miracle? He turned water into wine at a, at a wedding feast, right? right. He went in jail, turned the water into wine. No. Oh. Sis thought he was out here making no, hoops. I didn't think so. I'm just saying <laughs> how black men are treated like. Right, right. True, true. Hey, bro. Hey, bro, real quick. We, it's another, it's one more. One more key factor. So we already said he got woolly hair. That's only a trait that we got, right? Right. He got red eyes. He drunk wine, the whites of his eyes turned red, right? Yeah. Read. Really. At his feet. You remember he had on a garment down to his foot. So John can see his feet. Now, if you take your shoes and your socks off, you'll be able to see your feet, right? They're the same color as the rest of your body. 
Let's see what color his feet were. And his feet, like a to fine brass. What color is brass? Raw brass. It's like the color of a penny. It's like the color of an old penny. It's real dark brown like me. You understand? That's what color raw brass is. But let's see how dark this brown was. As if they burned in a furnace. He said that man's feet was so dark brown it looked like they had been burned in a furnace. You know, that's a joke we used to say when we were younger, right? Your mama's so black, look like she burned in the oven. Bring it out. That's what John saw. He right. said this man was so dark that it looked like he burned in a furnace. Right. This was Jesus to Christ he was describing. That's right. So understand that Jesus from the tribe of Judah was a black man, a very, very dark black man. Right. right? You know the, the term Jew comes from the tribe of Judah, right. the southern right. kingdom of Judah. Right? So the Jews are black people. That's right. right. The Jews are black. You are a Jew. Right. You are a you are an Israelite if your father is from Ephraim, but the Jews is what they would call all of us. But you will be from the northern kingdom of Israel. There was a split, a little bit into that history and stuff like that. But you are an Israelite. Right. Jesus Christ was an Israelite. Right. Black color is all through this Bible. Right. I used to think this Bible was a white man book because I saw Jesus as a white man. I saw God as a white man. I saw the angels as a white man. Right. I saw uh, uh, Adam, uh, Moses in the Ten Commandments by Charleston Heston, Bring it Noah out. in the movie uh, in the movie about the ark. All of them was white people. So I'm thinking, yo, you know what? This ain't for me. But believe it or not, this is the most pro-black book on the face of That's the earth. Right. That's right. The book didn't change. Your understanding by who taught it to you is what changed. Right. That's what changed. You were taught your history by a bunch of liars. Right. They're not going to tell you your history. They're going to tell you their history that they want you to know. You understand? Then they're going to give you stuff like this and say, this is, this is who you should worship. This is who you should worship. Right. And they did it under those lies. You grew up in church, right? Your mama made you go to church or your grandma. Somebody made you go to church. What, what type of church was it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Like what I'm saying, what denomination? Like mine was a uh, was like non-denominational Baptist Pentecostal. So they kind of all the same thing. That stuff was created by John Smith in 1608. Oh. The 1600s, 1608. Where was black people in the 1600s? What was our condition? Bring it out. What was our condition in the 1600s? Oh, we, came okay. we were slaves. Right. Oh. We were slaves in the right. 1600s. You know what was going on in the 1600s with your people, the Native Americans? Right. They were just now being bought back from being put in reform schools because they were taken from over here in the 1400s. Right. Y'all left here being called Gad. You came back and they said, nah, y'all just Indians. Y'all just slaves. That's right. what Indian means, yep. right? That's what Indian means. You understand? The difference between the majority of the people on this sign is the boat stop. That's it. it Y'all were taken from here or either enslaved here and names changed. We were taken from the West Coast to Africa and brought over here and names changed, understanding changed and stuff like that. You right. get it? But we're the children of Israel. So for us being the children of Israel, there's something that God requires of us, right? But first, um, you know what happened to our people, right? How did we get over here? I know you know no Native Americans were here, but the same thing happened to them that happened to the so-called, you know, uh, Southern King, the blacks. Yep. The same thing happened to them. They were brought over here how? My course, I don't know, like, I'm, I don't know which answer you want. By the boat. I'm yep, yep. By the boat is a good one. By the boat is a good one. Watch this. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28. Let's let's do 15, then do 68. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 15. Come on. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, come on. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So Moses told the children of Israel, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in the wilderness, if we do not keep the commandments that he has given us by the mouth of the Lord, right? If we do not observe to do everything that we're supposed to be doing, read, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee, that we will be cursed from God. And they would overtake us and overcome us because we didn't keep our end of the bargain. Right? The contract was laid out. He said, hey, look, this is what I'm going to give you if you keep your end of the bargain. But if there's a breach of contract, this is what you're going to get. So we were entered into a contract with the Lord that created heavens and the earth. Right. And we broke the contract. You about to ask a question? How, we broke, how, how did we break the contract? Right here. Watch. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28 and verse 68. No, go to 15. Verse 15. 
Matter of fact, go to 48. She said, how do we break the covenant? Go to uh, 40, 45. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee uh -huh. till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not to the voice of the Lord thy God. It said, because we didn't do what we was told to do. He said, hey, you know what? Don't eat that pork. You pork. know what we did? But you know what I'm saying? They grilled it though. It looked good, man. It's been barbecuing for like 16 hours. We're gonna try that junk. He said, he said, hey, you know what? Women, don't wear pants. But you know what, you know what we said? But no, man, I can't be wearing dresses all the time. It's comfortable for me to wear pants. I like wearing pants a little more. Matter of fact, I ain't doing it for nobody else. I just like the way these fit on my butt. You see what I'm saying? That's what we did as a people. That's why we got cursed. It's because he gave us laws to keep and we didn't keep them. That's right. You understand? Read. To keep his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee. All right, so that's why, right? Go to 68. This is another curse. So when you read Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 through 14 is the blessings. That's the part of the contract. That's the reward we get for holding up our end of the bargain. You understand? Verse 15 through 68 is what we what what the punishment would be if we preach the contract. Right? And any contract you get in, you get those terms laid out for you before you even sign it. That's what's going on. The contract was laid out for us before we even signed it. It was signed in blood. But before we even signed it, it was laid out for us. All right, so read this. This is one of the curses that will happen if we breach the contract. So let's see if we breach the contract. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So it said we shall be brought into Egypt or slavery again with ships. So now, Egypt, right? Yeah, yeah, Egypt. You know what I'm saying? You, heard, you, you, you got something on your neck. It seems, if I'm not mistaken, it come from Egypt. Yeah, it does. It come from Egypt, right? Yeah. So, so let's get, uh, uh, yeah, Exodus 20 and start at verse 3. Yep. The book of Exodus. Yeah, start at verse 1. Verse yeah. 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of where? Out of Egypt. Out of where? Out of Egypt. He said, the Lord thy God brought us out of Egypt. Not our homeland. Egypt is a word synonymous with captivity. Right. You know, when we were in the land of Egypt, we, you, you know, you, if you got that on, you know, you King Tut and all of that. You seen them images on his tomb, on his tomb, right? Where it's got black people working and black people over overseeing them and stuff like that. I didn't pay attention to the detail. But okay. Yeah, yeah, they had the Hebrews, the, Egypt, the Egyptians had us enslaved. Right. We were enslaved in that land. Black people had black people enslaved. Right. Right. We built the Valley of the Kings. We built Pithom and Ramses. We built all of that for them. Right. The pyramids, all of that, we built that. That's what happens when you got a nation or multiple nations in captivity. Right. Egypt is a, uh, it comes from Mizraim. Right. Mizraim means misery. Right. Land of captivity. That's where that name is. Is That's where that landmass is called, Mizraim. Right. So that's what happened. I'm going to show you how there's a difference between us. Give me uh, 11 and 7, Exodus yeah. 11 and 7. Yeah. Give me Exodus 11 and 7. I'm going to show you something right quick. The book of Exodus, chapter 11 and verse 7. We're going to go back to Exodus 20. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Now the Lord calling the other nations dogs. Because it don't mean you can't, your dog can't lick you. It said against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. That means can't nobody speak against us, right? Read. Against man or beast. Not even the animals we own. Read. That ye may know. That, that you may know how that the Lord put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So the Lord classified and put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Right. Right? There's a difference between those people. Did he choose the Egyptians? Nope. He chose the Israelites. We right. just saw that. He chose the Israelites. He didn't choose the Egyptians. Right? Now go back to Exodus 20 real quick because we're going to deal with that. Ready? I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Bring it up. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. It says thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So it said we're not to make any images of anything that we see, right? But that, that sounds kind of weird because it's like, man, what, that mean we can't have photos? 
That means we can't have statues, stuff like that. That's not what they're saying. Let's get the rest of that commandment, right? It's law. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. That's what that means. You can't make anything and set it up to bow down to worship. Like, for example, we told you this is a more accurate depiction of what Jesus Christ would have looked like. We're not saying that's him, but don't worship any image of any man. Just understand that the man was black, right? Understand that the man was black. Now, that, that um you got on your chest, that's worshipped by Egyptians. That is a thing of worship by Egyptians, right? Your guy said, don't do that. Right? He said, don't do that thing, right? Give me a Habakkuk. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, you hit it up. Uh-huh, you in the spirit. Yeah, so it said, don't make no idols to bow down to worship them. What does that do for you? What does it mean to you when you got it on? A symbol of life. A symbol of life? Mm -hmm. Your life is a symbol of life. Bring it up. Why you need something else to show it? I didn't need it. I just liked it. I like accessories. As a woman. Okay, okay. It came from Egypt. To do, but... It came from Egypt. Hold on real quick. Give me a, uh, hold that and give me Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs 331. Cause we just said, you know, we were enslaved in Egypt. They were our oppressors. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I know that. I know what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm and that's what we're here for, sis. We're here to help you. Right? We're here to help you. Just like that brother took his hat off to show repentance. We're here to help you, right? I'm gonna show you something real quick. Give me this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, and verse 31. Go ahead. Envy thou not the oppressor. It said, Envy thou not the oppressor. Read. The oppressor is somebody who would have you enslaved. Right. The Egyptian nation of people oppressed the children of Israel. Right. Right? Read. And choose none of his ways. And what? And choose none of his ways. And what? And choose none of his ways. Okay, she hear it. She I hear it. Uh-uh. She hear it. Nah, don't run. Don't run. It said a what? And choose none of his ways. So that way around your neck is an Egyptian custom. Right. But you're greater than them. So even if it's sparkly, your God said, hey, look, don't choose that. Don't choose that. Right. Okay. Isaiah 31 and 1. We'll take this. Isaiah 31. Yeah. 31 and 1. Yeah. So it said, just keep that in mind. Repentance, you you showed them forth repentance because you put the bonnet back on. You was embarrassed because you was like, I don't want to be on camera with my bonnet on, but I gave you the understanding that you was like, I bet. I see that, right? Now we're going over something that you seem to cherish a little bit, which is that, that thing around your neck, right? That thing around your neck. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 31 and verse 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Oh, so it ain't a sign of life. For us, it's a sign of captivity. <laughs> Read. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Read. And stay on horses and trust in chariots because there are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. Because it's sparkly, because it's, it, it looked pretty to the eyes, it's a sign of life. No, it's not. No, it's not. It says woe. You know what woe means? Woe means destruction. Right. That is an idol. What does God feel about idolatry? That is an idol. Understand that. You uh, you want to be righteous. I see yes. it in your face. Yes. You want to be righteous. Uh -huh. Righteousness is keeping the commandments. That's right. Right? That's right. what righteousness is. It's an action. You can't feel righteous. You got to be you got to be being righteous, right? That's right. So righteousness is keeping God's laws. Right. God just said destruction to those that go and trust in Egypt. Right. They trust in Egypt for help. So that unk ain't helping you. Bring it it's out. a deceit. It's I not helping you. Helping it can't be a symbol for life if they killed us now. What profit if the graven image? It says, what profit if the graven image? Right, read. That the maker thereof have graven it. Go ahead. The molten image and a teacher of lies. That, that's a molten image around your neck. You know how you form gold, you melt it down, you put it in a, a thing, so it's a molten image. God said, what profit is it? It's a teacher of lies. So you're wearing it because you say it teach is it, it's a symbol of life. It's not. It's not. It's a dick in a penis, but it's I mean a dick in a vagina, but it's not a teacher of life. Bring right. it out. It's not a teacher of life. You, you, so you think we don't know what it means? We understand it. We all we all looked into all of that stuff at one point in time in our life. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's a teacher of lies, right? So how you how you think you can show forth repentance regarding that? Uh-uh. Nah, nah, nah. We, that ain't what we do with idols. Hey, check this out for you Toss that bad boy. Launch it. Yeah, let's get let's get the scripture. Okay. Let's get the scripture. What do you mean like, wait? Yeah. Yeah, you don't keep no idols in the crib, not around you or none of that. Oh, okay, so I gotta tell you. None of that. You gotta get rid of that. Read. 
the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 22. You shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. It said, you shall defile the graven images of silver. And the ornament of thy molten images of gold. And the ornaments of your molten images of gold. It said, you shall defile them. You right. shall, that means you shall destroy them. Get them away from you, read. Thou shall cast them away. Oh, man, it said, you shall what? Thou shall cast them away. Hey, sis, listen to what you got to do with that. Oh, read. Thou shalt cast them away. Thou shalt cast them away. Is it hard? It's hard for you to do it, Read. As a mistress cloth. Uh, do you keep your tampons or your pants? You don't, do you? Uh, no, That's I what don't. a mistress cloth is, eh? Right. It said you, you got to throw that thing away like a mistress cloth. Right. Like a cloth full of blood. You got to throw it away. Blood Read it again. Clot. The blood clot. Read it again. Thou shalt cast them away as a mistress cloth. Go ahead. Thou shalt say unto it, get thee hence. He said, you shall say unto it, get thee hence. It's hard for you, ain't it? i do it for you. Okay, Pop thank it off you your guys. neck. Thank you. Take it on off, sis. Come on. Don't get caught out there now. Because you know the Lord don't play. Oh, thank you. I'm going. I'm, the I'm Lord don't play. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to sell it, though. Hey, hey, give me, um, give me uh, Psalms 119.59. I want to show you something real quick. I want to show you something real fast. Yes, I'm at work. My boss is pulled up. Uh, hey, man, if you bring your boss over here, we'll tell him you ain't supposed to be working on the Sabbath day. Bring it up. Right. Bring him on over here. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 59. Right. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. It said, I thought on my ways and turned your, their, your feet unto the testimonies of the Lord. Read. I made haste. Now, I didn't say I'm a work in progress. I, I, I think about it. I do it. Read. I made haste and made, delay. What does made haste mean? Doesn't mean anything good. No, I made haste. It means you did something quickly, right? I did something quickly, read. I made haste and delay not to keep thy commandments. I made haste and delay not to keep the commandments of the Lord, right? So if you don't toss that today, you breaking another commandment. Bring it out. Then you breaking another commandment. If you toss it, is it gonna do you any harm? Can it hurt you if you throw that? No. Huh? You gonna sell it? So you gonna give it to somebody else for them to believe it's a lie? I'm not gonna do with them. You just informed me now. I got information. I'm gonna make. make that's it that's how we got enslaved. It's cause we not each one teach one. We every man for himself. We every man for himself. You ain't supposed to be like that. Right. Right. I'm telling it, but thank you right. for the information. I appreciate it for real. If, I'm we, was each one if we was all about ourselves, sis, we wouldn't have taught you nothing today. I ain't just about myself either. Well, don't sell it. Toss it in the street. Let the streets have it. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. 